Ma'am, it's done. I will make the host and I will leave. Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you. Ha, ma'am, did you get the host, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma I will leave, ma'am. Thank you. Very good morning, one and all. Myself, Dr. Sharada, and on behalf of my institution, I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Paulson for the program Ergonomics for Teachers. Why does ergonomics is needed for teachers? As we teachers play an essential role in everyone's life, not only teaching, we also inculcate many things to our students like moral values, etiquette, and so on. It is granted that technology has opened the door of new learning and also changed the course of education. Good teacher has the power to change the student's life, unite them in the most perfect way. And teachers are more susceptible to musculoskeletal disorders as office workers are. Teachers can teach effectively, safely, and with good ergonomics in response to today's classroom needs. I'm sure this uh, program, like ergonomic for teachers, 
it will help us and help to minimize the discomfort and improve productivity. Today, we have Dr. Paulson with us. Dr. Paulson is the founder of Indian uh, Federation of Indian Manual Therapist and also the founder of Leoyan. He has completed his post graduation from the University of South Australia, Adelaide. And Dr. Paulson has extensive training and teaching experience in the field of manual therapy for more than a decade. And he has uh, taken uh, many uh, programs in many reputable institutions and in hospitals in India and abroad. He was being awarded as Professor Emeritus by Honorable Health Minister of Karnataka, Dr. Shudhakar. And also he is the Editor-in-Chief for Rajiv Gandhi Journal of Physiotherapy. We are so happy to welcome Dr. K. Paulson and his teammates Ashutosh, Ashin, Atira, Sakshi and Kalas for today's program titled Ergonomics for Teachers. So please welcome. Respected uh, Ms. Palmer, uh, I'm uh, very happy for sharing my experience over here. And uh, Madam is very uh, encouraging as soon as we asked for a kind of uh, uh, ergonomics to the teachers or you know, software professionals. Uh, normally, uh, uh, way back in 2002 to 2006, I was an ergonomic consultant for Wipro. Okay, so we have been doing a lot of uh, ergonomic things for software people. So mostly software people are more uh, susceptible to get uh, RSI, repetitive pain injuries. So we have thought now because of this new number. Everyone is using the gadgets. So it is not only the uh, software professionals. You say from uh, uh, first standard kid to you know, any, any worker is using mobile today. So it is uh, very important for each and everyone to know how we are going to use it. So that is the main purpose. What we have planned for the day or the, the first uh, session is uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, ergonomics and uh, interface. So interface is uh, the table or mobile or laptop or you are driving or you know, anything is the interface. So, and after that, uh, Astush will be talking about uh, the assessment part, what, what kind of movements which we need to assess and how we are going to find, you know, the kind of movement dysfunctions in each and every one. And each one of us move differently and they are all unique. So it doesn't mean that uh, we are wrong. Okay? So we are right in our way. But at the same time, we need to have some amount of adequate amount of you know, muscle balance to uh, perform uh, activities. So for example, as a teacher, I need to stand for a long time. Uh, we need to strengthen the uh, postural muscles. So what I mean by that is uh, the back muscles. So the back extensors or the spine, you know, muscles or the, the butt or the hamstrings or the calf muscle has to be strengthened. So I can stand for, you know, six hours, eight hours. So uh, I would uh, look in that way. So we try to, you know, assess that, what we have. And then uh, Kalash will be doing the exercise part for that okay and then uh, we have uh, Ashin who is going to talk about uh, uh, resilience so resilience is uh, you know uh, when we have a chronic pain so what we mean by chronic pain is uh, anything we have more than three months so everyone has uh, one or other pain so once we have a chronic pain we will have uh, something in the a brain, you know, getting disturbed. So we say in our terminology called as central sensitization. So even though we don't have tissue injury, you will get the pain whenever you do a walk. So for example, you know, when we are given a project to do, or whenever we are given a task to do, 
and we think that okay we are not going to you know or we are not fit enough to do the same so what will happen we will feel that will i be able to do that so we need to overcome that so each and every one will have hurdles like you know, for example we are driving from uh, nahawali to the campus we will see traffic we will see signals we will have potholes so we have to overcome that so that's what what we have to overcome in our day to day life and that's what what we have to overcome in our job and other areas uh, what will we do like you know when you walk on the lab or when you walk on the industry or when you drive back or whenever you teach and all these things which you will be then by her and then uh, uh, we have adira who's going to uh, talk about uh, generalized exercises so apart from you know specific exercises according to your assessment we also have generalized exercises which uh, all of us can do daily right so then of course um, we have akshay who is going to uh, give us a uh, enlightening you know thought about yoga and she has been doing from uh, so um she has been doing you know she's a yoga trained teacher and uh, she keep herself fit every day by doing so so we have a uh, app people with us okay. so once again thanks to dr sharada for introducing me okay. but uh, uh, i have uh, two decades of experience in teaching and there will not one decade we got married uh, 14 15 years back <laughs> so maybe after seeing it, yes. Uh, so I I have uh, done my bachelor's uh, way back in '93, '97. Then I was uh, working in a hospital. Then I went to Australia to do my masters, and then came back. And uh, I, I was a principal in a college. And then. I started doing the ergonomics and manual therapy teaching. So I've traveled almost 45, 50 cities in India and abroad also. So my thing is, you know, uh, more of manual therapy. So manual therapy is nothing but uh, what we do with the hand. So you would have seen like in a physiotherapy, we talk about electrotherapy, like modalities. So we try to combine both the things. So electrotherapy and manual therapy. So you would have seen uh, most of the sports uh, physios or sports team, like you know, you've seen the physios running into the field and uh, teaching or doing some movements. So that's what we are doing. So coming back to our task today is about ergonomics. So ergonomics is uh, anything like, uh, as you all know, that like, you know, when you talk about ergo, it's work or the nomics is you know trying to fit according to the need of the person rather than the availability so this is the most important so like for example i'm going to drive a car and so i adjust my car seat according to my height my width my arm span so if somebody else is going to get into the driving seat they have to change so I can't uh, really fit myself in somebody's shoes, right? you know? So I have to change that. That's what, uh, what we need to look in. Uh, the issue is, you know, we, uh, I had an experience with a, a credit card company from US. So we have been teaching ergonomics for them. So they were all working in the night, you know, like the BPO people walk in the night. So what has happened is we have taken a feedback, like before joining this job, they like uh, rock music. And after joining the job, they hate rock music. In a sense, uh, the habit changes because of the sleep pattern. And the reason why we got into the company is uh, that efficiency has reduced. So when the efficiency has reduced, they asked uh, you know, a team of people to support them. So that's where uh, us, uh, a uh, team of you know ergonomic like we had a uh, nutritionist we have psychologists we have eye specialists we have orthopedic and everyone i was also part of it so we got to know like that habit changes because of the life time changes or life pattern changes so that's what like you know today's world we are all living in a competitive world where 
your time bound. So like you know, nine to five or nine to one or nine to ten, we need to finish a task. Like for example, you know, we are given a syllabus, we frame that, okay, and we have uh, uh, this much subject to be taken. So we are, we are uh, monitored or uh, well designed to you know finish up the project in time. So that's why we have to really reinforce the time management and all these things, which is very important in terms of you know. Are uh, getting into the uh, economics. So that's what what we talk about the chat or anything. You, I, I would advise like you know, you keep uh, a different setup for your chair. Okay, so you can't like you know, we have a ten chairs, similar chairs, but you really need to know the length of your thigh bone. You need to know your height. You need to know your what kind of a laptop or mobile or what you're going to do, pad or tab or whatever you use, you have to change accordingly. So that is more important. So that's what uh, the ergonomics is all about. Uh, so you make features fit according to your need. Okay. So that is very important. Convenience and comfort is much needed for us to change the ergonomics position. So if I don't change so, it is going to be uh, difficult, okay? So that's what, uh, what we are, are looking always whenever you try to get into any kind of movement or act. So before we start further session, I uh, call upon Sakshi to, uh, to do a little bit of yoga for all of us, okay? And then we will keep moving, all right? Hello everyone, I'm Sakshi. We'll uh, do first the pranayama, deep breathing pranayama, and then some three, four poses of uh, chair yoga that you can do daily while working also every two, three hours, so you can keep yourself fit. So first, uh, sit straight, everybody. Close your eyes. Sit straight. <laughs> no, you just have to listen me. Okay, we'll do first pranayama, deep breathing pranayama. Eyes closed. Concentrate on your breathing. Deep breathing. Roll it out. Deep breathing. Roll it out. Okay, now open your eyes. Okay, I'm uh, giving you the counts. Then uh, for the four counts, you have to breathe in. And for the next eight counts, you have to slowly breathe out. On the count, on the beat, we will uh, perform it. I will show you at once. Okay, try to breathe in in four counts. Try to breathe out very slowly in eight counts. Okay, close your eyes. Okay, concentrate on your breathing. Okay, first normal breathe in, breathe out. Okay. One, two, 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 breathe out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in, out. Without within without out. 
within within So you open your eyes. Now we'll do some asanas on chair only. Please sit straight. First, basic flexion extension exercises. Breathe in and take your hands slowly up. Straight, elbow straight. Then breathe out and slowly bend down to back. Okay, you have to touch your feet down. Now breathe in and slowly take your hands up. It was straight. Breathe out and bend down. Try to touch your toes. Hold there for 10 to 15 seconds. Normal breathing. Again, breathe in and out. Hands up. Breathe out and down. Down, try to touch your feet. Normal breathing. Again, breathe in and out. One last time, breathe out and slowly down. Okay, breathe in and out. Breathe out and hands down. Uh, hands down, relax, relax. Again, we will do it at once. Okay, normal breathe in and hands up. Breathe out and hands down. Try to touch your feet. Breathe in and out. Breathe out and hands down. Your breath, hands on your thighs, hands on your thighs. Relax. This was flexion, flexion exercises. Next, we will do twisting activities. Okay? First, from the right side, sit. 
take your right hand, right hand on left side. Hi, if I have a handle chair, you can uh, hold that handle, or else you can hold your thigh, left thigh, left hand on your back of chair, back of chair twist. Breathe out and come to neutral. From the opposite side, now take left hand on the right thigh, right hand on back of chair, and breathe out and twist. Breathe out and twist. Okay, breathe in and relax. Once again, from the left side, right hand on the left thigh. Breathe out and twist. Every time you will breathe out, you have to twist yourself more. Okay, hold that position for 10 to 15 seconds. Breathe out and back. From left side, breathe out and twist. Twist, hold for 15 seconds. Okay, breathe in and relax. Relax, then side bending. You have to keep your right hand on armrest or else uh, just hold the chair. Where your left hand should be straight. Left hand should be straight, okay. Now breathe out and try to bend maximum to the left side. So the right side. The hand should be straight and uh, hand should be straight. Okay. Neck should be neutral, not this. this. Okay, look straight. And try to bend maximum. Breathe in and come up. Hand down. Now take your right hand up. <laughs> Breathe out and bend to the left side. Right arm. Take down as much as possible. Hold that position. You have to hold each and every position for 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, now breathe in and come up and down. Again from the left side. Breathe out and bend. Breathe in and up. Okay. From left side. From right side. Breathe out and bend to the right side. Left side. Breathe in and up. Okay. Relax. Done. Thank you, She got the things prepared within maybe an hour and a half. So, yeah.
happened to meet in the morning and then she was telling about the background. She has uh, recently joined our postgraduate program. She's from Pune. So she's from Pune. So she, thank you. Thank you. So we will continue further. So we, you can, you know, we will maybe get a video taped by, by her and share it. So all of us, uh, if possible, uh, if time permits, you can do in the morning sessions before we get into work. So what do you see in this picture? Love and affection. Okay. Anything else? Children. Children. Bonding. Sorry. <laughs> you should be a physiotherapist. <laughs> Kalash. <laughs> so we look differently, right? So a poet will start writing something or uh, love and affection or uh, kisses or bouquet or whatever comes to your mind. So as a physiotherapist or as a professional in different category, we look different. But at the end of the day, we need to you know, look ergonomically how good we want to sit for ourselves. So, I'm, going, I'm not going to drive the car what you're going to do. I'm not going to take the class what you are going to do. So everyone is different. So we have to really make a tailor-made for each other. So we can't have a, a rigid black and white rule saying that, you know, you do like this. Because I have a muscle imbalance of uh, uh, some of the muscles and you have uh, some of the muscle, muscle imbalance. So uh, never, you know, why I'm saying is, uh, uh, yeah, professional input is always good rather than we look into video and try to see it like the social media has come, like you, know, you type uh, uh, ergonomics, you get hundreds of videos. So you, you can get a better uh, explanation, but uh, professional input is always needed. So that's all like, you know, as a physiotherapist or, you know, kind of fact, we see uh, no shoulder, you know, uneven hips, not knees or foot tans. Because one of the most important things you would have noticed that when kids walk, you see that. Yeah, till 14 years they walk like that. And they should not be bothered. But at the same time, if they have a recurse deficiency, they also walk. So anyone, like, you know, if you see uh, among your society, if anyone has this issue for a long period of time, they're inability to do it. And they have to do the you know, uh, investigations by the orthopedician or BMD and other lab tests has to be to it. So we, we have to look each and every one as different and each and every one has a way of moving things and doing things. So that's what I would say always, you know, we have a muscle imbalance in each and every activity which we do. And how many of you are right side dominant, all of us? Do we have a left foot or left dominant? Yeah. So they will be very, you know, a short time break. <laughs> we are going to talk about what imbalance we have, and we are going to look at that. That's what the whole session is all about. So coming back. To the, the main core principles behind working on ergonomics is work in a neutral position. So what is neutral for me or what is neutral for others will be different. Okay. So we have a definition for neutral spine, but it doesn't go on with that. So when you think this is a, a real spine. So this is what we are all carrying. We are going to carry for 80 years or 90 years. So you, you see the curvature, right? If you can see from there. Can you see the curvature? 
So it's the band over here and it comes up and again. So that's a, a curvature which we need. This is for the neck and this is for the back and this is in the mid back. Okay, we say thoracic, cervical, and lumbar. But uh, if you see in the mother's womb, like you know, you, when you see the ultrasound scan of the uh, mother who is carrying, what, what will be the position of the child? So, so we have one, only this. So God has gifted us to crawl like a monkey. But because of the super sense which we have, we try to walk, we try to stand. So we are going against the rock, or we are going against the God. So he is punishing us with neck pain and back pain. So it's, it's not stable to carry all the weight. Okay, so that is what why we get a lot of neck pain and back pain, and we don't get mid back pain much. All of us, you know, in our lifetime, you would have encountered back pain and neck pain. So maybe a niggle. Okay. So it's all because of the posture we are supposed to crawl, we started standing, we started walking. So we really need to hold the entire weight. So we need to keep our muscles a little bit stronger. So if you see the spine and the muscles surrounding that area has to be strengthened. And we all know that like as we get old and old, there will be degeneration. That's a normal process. But if you keep strengthening the muscles, that will hold the spine properly. So always, you know, we have an opportunity at any age to strengthen the muscle. So many people you would have seen, like, you know, they learn uh, marathon running at the age of 60, 70, or they have achieved, and you would have seen people trekking to Himalaya at a very late age. So nothing is, you know, wrong when we start. So only thing is we need to start doing some kind of movements in order to keep ourselves uh, fit and, you know, do the exercise. And decrease the need of excessive forces. So when we say so, like, you know, we have uh, to handle in a such a way that we don't need a big forces, which is not relevant to your work or your body. So for example, if somebody asked me to lift, uh, yeah, probably yeah, 100 kgs, it's not appropriate for me. So maybe uh, 20 or 25 kgs good enough for me to hold. And if you take a weight lifter, yes, he can do a 200 kg lifting of 150. So according to our body and our posture, so we need to you know, eliminate what is not required. And keep material within easy reach. So and I'm keeping the laptop here. I, I still remember like we get uh, a lot of uh, medical professionals coming to us with the neck pain. And particularly people who work on uh, like you know government setup, and you know that in, they have alternative days OPD, and uh, they will have seventy five to hundred patients. They have to see in two three hours. So they're going to sit like this, and when they sit here, and the patient will be coming on the internet, all right. So they are always turning to one side, mm -hmm. and they are keep writing the prescription. So what happens is after over the years they will have restriction in the movement of the neck. And it will cause the first the bone, then the muscle, and it will affect the entire spine. Because we all know that the spine is you know, interconnected. So if you have a, a imbalance here, it's going to affect the neck. So if you have an imbalance in the neck, it's going to affect the back. So it is well connected. And if you have uh, foot turned in, like uh, you would have seen people with the flat foot. All of you would have heard about flat foot. Like, you know, so one of the things is that after pregnancy, people get flat foot because of the hormonal imbalances and it comes back normally. Okay. But if you have a flat foot, you can have a back pain or you can get a leg pain. It's all interconnected. The whole body is interconnected. So that's what, you know, why. The posture is very, very important to maintain that. And walk at a proper height. So this is ideal for me. 
to stand and then you know the talk or speech. Okay, so if I am going to keep the laptop here and work in like this, it's not going to do. And when you are young, okay, when you are doing for one day, okay, when you are doing for two days, okay, but when you keep doing the same activity again and again, we get into So one of small example I tell you, you all would have been using mouse, right? How do you use the mouse? Right. So when you use the mouse, we keep the wrist part compressing the table. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have a, a mouse pad or you eliminate it. You have to hold it. So what will happen if I'm going to keep the mouse over here? The, there is a nerve called median nerve. Okay. So median nerve get compressed and it can sustain 32 mm mercury level pressure. Okay, so if I'm doing for one day, it is fine. If I'm doing for one year, same like that, it is going to lose its property. So after that, what will happen? They will get, start getting pain. So that's a very common thing which we see with uh, anyone who works on the computer. Okay, so which is very important. We should not be causing any pressure at that wrist. And so all this, you know, we will be talking. That's what which is very important. Uh, reduce unnecessary motions. So think about like you know standing and trying to reach out. Most of the people like with back pain when they come to a clinic, they will be driving three hours, two hours, or they are coming from Indiana to you know Vijayanagar for as a patient. They come drive the one hour they drive. That is fine. But when they come out, they try to take a bag. Okay. So you have been loaded for an hour, so muscle has become fatigued. After that, this do a small movement of standing and picking the back, that causes the pain. So you should be knowing, you know, how to turn and bend. So more than that, I would say, like, you know, you keep doing some motion. So that's what uh, we all say, like, you know, uh, motion is lotion. So you all know we have a fluid inside the joint, right? So it will get reduced as we get aged. So we need to recharge it. So how do you recharge it? By doing movements. By doing movements, we can recharge. So I give you an example. We have uh, six ml of fluid with uh, this function, the shoulder. Okay. So we say frozen shoulder. You all were had about frozen shoulder. They are not able to do the movement. But normally we will be having 20 ml. So what happened? 14 ml is Reduce, so we will get friction. Friction really causes one of degeneration. So how to overcome that? Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. That's the only way that we can keep the, you know, the physiological properties of the entire body. And minimize fatigue caused by static load. So keep standing in one position for a long period of time. So always, uh, I would uh, suggest, and you all know that, you keep changing the weight shift, right? So when you stand like this, we normally say people, when they're walking in the uh, home, like when they're cooking, they, everyone has to be in the kitchen by 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, apparently, with, you know, time bomb, you have know, to get ready and come to the office. So you need to transfer that weight. So more scientifically, we say, like, you know, you keep a foot rest and keep the leg up. So that is also another way. If you don't want, you just keep shifting. Other thing we tell is, you know, keep working on the core muscle. So tighten the abdomen whenever you are in the moon. So what will happen, it will strengthen your muscles. And as well as, uh, you know, you will not be over bounded or you will not be overloaded with more activities. So one of the simplest thing is, we're going to teach you that. So you you identify the umbilicus and you know you try to suck it, try to hold. It. But you should be doing a, a normal breath. You should be doing a normal breath and then you know keep walking. So whenever you walk, you hold your abdomen, core muscle, because always you believe that the core muscle is the main important thing for either upper or lower body. It's a connective or you know, it's a kind of a, a thing which holds the entire system. So always uh, we need to keep
keep tightening. So that's what when we go to like uh, people who run and tell or who will walk for uh, like you know their fitness level, we always tell them you keep your umbilicus tightened and then walk. You know you 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 will see that you have more power in you rather than not holding it. And you do it for ever, it becomes better whenever you remember. So please remember that and uh, leave adequate clearance. Uh, that is, you know, if you keep uh, so many things in a table and reaching, so uh, you keep your table well planned. So uh, keeping things on the right and the left, all this will be explained again and move and stretch toward the day. So one of the things like, you know, you all can do the yoga is good and you know, scientifically proven and it has got a lot of uh, immunity factor which can be you know given through uh, breathing because even for a back pain we teach breathing exercise even for a neck pain we teach breathing exercise the breathing that's a diaphragm or the breathing muscle which is very important for us so always you know start the day with it and keep your environment uh, comfortable so you're having a plant in front of you or in the table or having greenery in your room or staff room or you know any other offices which gives you good. So one of the things I, I will tell you is like you know after exposing to the uh, computer for a long period of time you close your eyes and then you think what you like. So maybe you know some people may like uh, uh, so he's a Shakit Kapoor. He's a big fan of you. After Kapoor. So, you know, you think about Kumo, uh, you know, we have a period maybe like uh, Aishwarya Rai or uh, anyone, Kumo, uh, you want. So that gives you a good brightness to the eyes. Yes. So factors of the things, economics of a teacher. So many factors are there, like, you know, start from the home, traveling home to college, you travel in the bus, holding like this. So overhead activities, you have a shoulder issues, or you have a big shoulder, you can't hold for a long period of time. So everything, like, you know, sitting there, you know, staircase, like, you know, I think you have a, a third floor, first floor, second floor, so you keep juggling around, or, Turning in lectures for 45 minutes and overhead or overhand activities when you are writing, okay, or when you are trying to demonstrate, and as well as traveling back home. So you have, you know, we are almost to one hour when we are going back home, right? So maybe like uh, if time permits, you do a little bit of two minutes or three minutes of yoga, you go, go home, and then you know you may be having a better energy. So sometimes uh, we get people saying that, uh, when will you get pain, right? So they say, as soon as I step into home, I get pain. Is that because of seeing the wife or kids? <laughs> so, sorry? Oh, my husband. <laughs> yeah. So better not go home till you know, nine o'clock. <laughs> Good. So how do you avoid it? All right. So, you work in a neutral position. So you see that like, you know, the back is unsupported and you try to get supported and get closer. Then. And these are the measurements which we need to look, which we need to take like a child or backrest or armrest, footrest, very essential armrest. If you don't have armrest, you're going to get neck and shoulder by Definitely. Okay. If you don't have an upper back rest, you're going to get the neck pain. So, only thing we can tell you, or you know, you can get an awareness of saying so, like, you know, you always need to be supported along the back. Maybe, probably, like, you know, if you are targeting with some project, you will go forward. Like, you know, if you're watching a, a climax of a movie, or you know, if you're watching a cricket, or the, you know, the, and period, we go forward and tend to move it. So that is a, you know, we will be very happy, you know, to keep people watching movies and uh, matches always because they always go into 
power head poster. So when you go for power head poster, everything will start and they're going to come to a physio or they're going to get into that, you know, medical pattern. But don't do that. Try to grow taller or elongate ourselves, which is much better. And we also see, you know, various other factors which we will be looking in deeper into that area, like you know, mission. And yeah, so this is the like you should not be doing the one up. You should be doing the things down here. So keep it more closer to you. Okay, clear the area like you know, scattering, and you can have a you know, paper which can be reached to your area or the mobile. And you could see here uh, a feature you know, the mechanics in which how you reach on the right hand side. This is that uh, right one. So we are always you know, conscious as a teacher, like you know what the students are going to say behind. Isn't it? So today's world students are very you know, faster and smarter than us. So we are going to. Uh, push us into like you know what is like so there is uh, we need to forget about that and try to hold on how we have to stand efficient so when you turn towards the board and look and write it's more safer rather than you know in here what they are doing and this mechanics is much better where you see a neutral position of the Fine. All right, then standing, we always look at the poster. What is this? I'm going to reach forward. Okay? I should not be reaching. So we say, like, uh, center of gravity, body support has to be within the leg. Or, you know, if it is over back, that's what happens with uh, when we have a big tummy. So obviously, like, uh, Center of gravity muscles again, so more activity of this posterior muscles. So that gets tightened, this gets lengthened, it becomes weaker. So if this imbalance, this is what happens with the normal imbalance when our post, if you remember, I told you about the curvature. So the neck and the back is a similar curvature, and the, on the middle is a similar curvature. So what happens is uh, if you have a change in the posture, the loading will change and the muscles will become lengthened and shorter. So if it happens for years and years, then it is going to cause some kind of impact. And the footwear, very important. You know, I think uh, today, Saturday, and all of us are going to wear a pencil stand. Is it? Seals? Is that? How many of you wear that? The pencil stand? Pencil stand or any heels, yeah, we are more prone to uh, get uh, ankle injuries. Get just, I had one lawyer you know, coming to me saying that I have broken my bones. So I asked her what has happened. So she was using that uh, pencil stand in the office and the foot was trapped in a pit and went down like that. So, but it, some, it's good for the back. For instance, and if you learn how to walk with that, your muscles will strengthen on its own. Okay. So one of the best thing is uh, uh, wearing it and using it appropriately is more important rather than you know saying that don't use it because many of the books that say that don't use heels. They say heels will cause back, but you see when you are like this, okay, you are what goes backward. So it automatically gets loaded. And you have to maintain that position and walk. And for the back or the spine, your back muscle and the butt muscles are very important. That's what you need to, all of us, if you have a, a park nearby or if you have a stationary cycle, kindly do that. That will strengthen your back and the butt, and you will never get back pain. I'm saying you will never get back pain if you do. 10 minutes of stationary cycling. Or if you like cycling or biking for long distance, it's very good. Yeah. So overhead activities, as you're talking about, riding on the board, load on the muscle. This is the one muscle which uh, get tightened. All of you would have felt it get you know, heavier. 
you would have seen that. So we say as a spasm of the muscle or stiffness of the muscle. So that can be you know, taken care of appropriately by doing the shoulder strength exercises. So one of the things we will be demonstrating it. So you just hold like this and keep doing that. This is fair enough for anyone. If you do 10 today, tomorrow 20, that they keep increasing. You don't need to carry big weights. Okay, I'm not asking you to do uh, dumbbells or anything, but just keep doing this up and down. It will strengthen your shoulder muscle. Yeah. And staircase climbing, you could see here, we get uh, weight bearing joints getting worn out. If you have knee issues, or if you have ankle issues, or even if you have back issues, you're climbing up and down again, it's going to cause a lot of load. So, how do we do that efficiently? You could see here, bending forward, and this should be avoided, and you need to get that erect posture. So, don't you know, uh, worry about uh, going forward a lot. So, because you might be saying that, you know, when you go forward, you are sent up that. So, if you keep on the base of support within you, you will be able to deliver the job or you will be able to do your work there. So you could see on the right picture what the thing you that is trying to walk well. So you always see that uh, that's more important for us. And uh, I think the work environment, what you are into, okay. So, so you can you can keep your desk or your chairs and your places comfortably as it is, and you, know, you will be able to do better, follow the small instructions, what I'm saying right now, trying to keep the spine here, right? get the chair closer to the table, because uh, I still remember that you, know, you all uh, would have gone with uh, you know, any social media thing, so you get to uh, uh, keep moving with uh, uh, the typing something. We used to have like a hardwood. Have you heard? Yeah. yeah, we used to have hardwood. So mm -hmm. if somebody said, here, yeah, we say ASL. So ASL means? Any idea? Age, sex, and location. So if somebody says that, oh, I'm from Nagababi, you know, you jump in because you're also from <laughs> So you were sitting like this, and after that, you pick up the mm -hmm. So that you go in. That's what, what we do with our projects. We, when we start, uh, somebody told you know, to sit up. Let us sit today for 10 minutes, five minutes. After that, we go. So, and you carry first on the back, you're going to get the charity card. So don't ever carry first on the back okay, of your hand or your anything because it compresses the nerve. So all these things which we need to keep changing. So don't stay in one position. So I would say like, you know, stay in one position, not more than 20 minutes. If you keep changing the positions, we can overcome that distance. So this is all, I think that the lab, it's appropriate height, appropriate position, yeah, ideally good. And your workstations, you have a, a V-shaped or, you know, T-shaped, tables, which is uh, good to keep all the materials reachable. So that is fine. And you know, this is the height that you are trying to keep. So when you're talking about the laptops, you have a lot of other factors which can be considered. All right. So thank you very much for listening here. And if you have any questions, uh, you can ask on my behalf, whatever I have delivered at the end. Okay. So if you want to do one more yoga session, we can do, then continue. All are okay? So you want to keep moving? A little bit. Push them some centimeters away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you need to take a few months there. Yeah, every 20 minutes you have to get correct. So if you ask me that, okay, I'm going to sit, and you can't sit the military sitting on.
So if I'm sitting like this and I'm walking on computer or I'm driving for continuously, so I would recommend you to press the back on the chair. So keep pressing. So for example, if you are in a traffic, if you're driving in the signal, you can keep pressing the back. So uh, when they do the movement, it increases the circulation. When you when the in, increase in circulation, toxins can be exhaled. So we say P substance, which is responsible for pain, can be taken off. So that's what like you know why we say movements are required. <laughs> yeah, you are <laughs> Uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am here to explain about our part. Uh, as a physiotherapist, what we should do to assess all the uh, What we are going to check uh, in day to day life in uh, the patients or the clients which are coming to us. So, this is a tool which we are going to, uh, I'm going to speak about that is a selective functional moment assessment. What the physiotherapist and other clinical people are going to, people are people going to check on the uh, patients. So, what it is? So, uh, it is a diagnostic tool which assesses. And treat, uh, which assess the moment pattern, and with the uh, assessment, what are the lags in the moment through which uh, any muscles or any injury is found in that patient, particular patient. So we are going to give a treatment accordingly. So it is a basically a diagnostic tool for the assessment and treatment of the musculoskeletal disorders. We, uh, we do by identifying. The dysfunctions in the moment patterns. Whatever moments we are performing in our day-to-day -day life, uh, any uh, dis uh, dysfunctions are there in that patterns. We are going to assess that and treat with the proper pattern. Uh, we will teach you the proper pattern to do how appropriately as much as possible. And uh, <laughs> Uh, it is a series of full body moment uh, moments to identify possible moment dysfunctions. Okay, so why uh, the SFMA is required to find out the cause, and we will explain the uh, sources of pain and discomfort which uh, which is going to be present in the uh, clients, and we will determine it by effective treatment and. Uh, with the shortened period of time, so that uh, uh, the clients which are coming to us and uh, they will be easily performing it. Okay. So, what are the pro problems which are which we are facing in day to day life uh, in our uh, like office uh, environment or your work environment? So, there are two patterns. Okay, uh, mobility and stability. Mobility is basically what we do every day. Uh, how we walk, how we sit, how we stand, how we move around, and uh, stability is uh, caused due to any any other pathological issues like swelling, any muscular musculoskeletal disorders like joint pain, any muscle stiffness. Okay, so there are basically two things uh, which we find in the mobility that is tissue extensibility dysfunction. It is a basically if we have muscles which we can't uh, flex to its normal anatomical length, then if we don't do it in that extent, uh, there will be a dysfunction. Okay, so proper nutrients won't reach to all the muscle, so there will be uh, there will be issue in that particular muscle. So uh, that extension of that particular muscle is not happening. So this will be limited. So that, that causes the dysfunction and joint mobility dysfunction. So if joint is not moving properly as much as accurately as possible, it will also cause the issues. So there are two types of mobility issues. 
tissue extensibility dysfunction and joint mobility dysfunction. The problems due to stability and motor control dysfunction, I'm going to talk. So, uh, what are the examples for tissue extensibility dysfunction and joint mobility dysfunction? So, active and passive ins insufficiency, like uh, the patterns which we are doing actively or passively, uh, there will be insufficiency. The muscles will be shortened. Because of that, there will be a mobility dysfunction. Limited neurodynamics, like the nerves in our body, which are not uh, going to lengthen properly. So because of that, there will be a dysfunction. If we don't move it regularly, okay? The muscular, muscular hypertrophy. Hypertrophy means it is a abnormal increase in the uh, size of your muscle. If it is uh, happened due to any cause, in a secondary cause, uh, that will also cause your mobility uh, dysfunction uh, and the trigger points. Trigger points are basically the, uh, there are certain points in our muscle fascia, okay, which will be uh, causing us uh, trouble, but we will not find it uh, soon. It will, it will not be acute. So as we progress to uh, uh, like doing, keep doing that with that point, we will be suffering the, uh, suffering that particular mobility problem after uh, two, three months or six months or two months or two years, if we do continue with that pain, it will cause your mobility problem. Then what are the joint mobility dysfunction? Examples, arthritis, that is also, uh, osteoarthritis is seen in mostly the ladies after menopause, you will see in all, most of the, I think 60 to 70% ladies will be having osteoarthritis post menopause, okay? So subluxation. Subluxation means partial, uh, like more uh, abnormal removal of your joint from the socket. Okay, uh, partially if the joint is getting displaced from its place, it's called as subluxation. And dislocation is the complete uh, uh, displacement of the. It's fine. Uh, uh, complete removal of the joint from their spaces. So if this happens due to some injury or something, then that will also cause you joint mobility, joint, joint fusion. So uh, what happens is some conditions causes your joint uh, fusion. So if the joint get fused or your spine gets fused due to some uh, deficiency, uh, any nutrients which is not uh, proper in our body, so it will also cause joint uh, fusion, okay? Uh, stability motor control dysfunction. So, the, what are the examples for that? Motor control dysfunction. Motor control is the like it's given by God to us. Like what we learn from doing any activities. Like we walk, what we, walk, we crawl from the from the beginning of our childhood. How we do the movements. How we learn to pick up the things. That are all motor comes under the motor control. Okay. So if it is not proper, that is a, that will that will that will also cause you the motor control dysfunction. So local, local muscle dysfunction and asymmetry, like if so so if there is any asymmetry in our uh, length of the uh, limbs, okay. If we walk, this is the length, no, normal length of the, our uh, uh, legs, okay. If there is some changes in both the limbs from right and left, so there will be uh, issue with our walking. If it is not proper, it will be having issues. So poor static stability. Uh, stability. If we don't stand properly, that is also causing you an issue, okay. So poor dynamic stability. If you don't walk properly with a proper uh, pattern of walking, we call it as a gait. Okay. If you don't walk it uh, walk properly, it will it will also going to cause you uh, dysfunction. So there are certain patterns which uh, we determine by assessing you uh, assessing. Okay, we are going to proceed after the three minute break. Thank you.
Thank you. So I'll be asking you to do certain activities. So which uh, we will be able to know what problems you have, and accordingly we will be teaching you uh, like uh, colors will be teaching you the exercise for a particular problem if you have any. Okay. So I, I'll be asking colors to do certain things, and you please do yourself and uh, please tell me if any difficulty you have. So for that, we will be prescribing you exercise in the next session. Okay. So can you do uh, uh, your flex you uh, like bend your neck forward down like this? Your do you have any difficulty in that doing that? Okay. Uh, can you stand for me and do that? Uh, all of you stand up. Okay. Okay. Right. So you just lift your neck up, looking it to the ceiling or looking up to. Do you have any discomfort? No, no. You get the pain. Okay. So, all right, come down. So if you have difficulty, right, if it is not a major issue, then uh, you just keep doing the movements up and down again. Okay. So that will help you to rectify the same. But if you are having, when you do the movement and when it is traveling down, somewhere else, then you need to go to a, a doctor or you need to see something. Okay, so it's very simple. Like, let's do this moment. We get, we say mechanical pain. Mechanical pain can be treated with movements. Okay, so mechanical pain, what we get is when you do movements, we get pain. So you just keep doing three, four movements again and again, you'll get better. So this is one component which will tell you like, you know, there are a lot of components in the neck. So we are not going to do that, but uh, we are also offering like, you know, we are having we have an OPD here in the college, positive therapy. So anyone has a particular issue with the movements here, then later on, you know, we have a, a complete uh, segment. So we have a complete uh, assessment format, like for example, we take the neck, we have so many patterns in it, not only the backward movement, as you said, the forward movement, rotation, all will, you know, try to tell us what has happened. So it's easy to find that. And next one is, uh, uh, can you show that? Yeah, can you do? Yeah, are you able to do that? Oh, very good, isn't it? So, yeah. Can you try on the left side? Is there any difference? No. Left side not possible. Uh, mostly dominant side will have difficulty because of repetitive work. The undominant side will have more movement. Okay, that's a normal thing. But if you have difficulty with the, with the movement of uh, the shoulder, then shoulder has to be screened. So the earlier one, we did the up movement that will screen the neck. Okay, so if you have a difficulty of doing the neck movement up, that is the neck has to be skinned. That is a cervical test. A complete skinning of that has to be done. And this is for the shoulder. So this. So, yeah. Left, you have difficulty. Right so you have uh, you kind of, you know, beside, uh, beside like uh, limited. So it could be various factors. Maybe using the right, left more compared to the right, or may not be using also. So there may be so many issues, or maybe we would have fell down and we got this, you know, some kind of injury. Maybe uh, playing shuttle or playing any game. 20 years back also, you know, it can show off after years. Right. Yeah. So, uh, 
How many of you feel the eyes are tight? We have to do some task of stretch. Let's say this. We have to do this yoga, which is much better. To get the flexibility. But another you know, the reason is if this muscle is, if the hamstring muscles are tight, then it will hold the pelvis better. So, as I told you, the trunk coat part is very important. So, stability wise, the muscle has to be tight. So, it's not necessary, like, you know, you should be going kicking down. So, if you feel that you have a tightness, well, so that saves your back and the pelvis. So, that's fine. Then we have the next one. Uh, backward movement. Good. So all of us are able to do well, right? But with some difficulty. <laughs> all right. So we, you know, we need to strengthen. As I told you, like this is the lengthened part and this is shortened part. So lengthened part has to be strengthened. If it is weak, that's why you know we have a, a beer part. Those who drink more beers will get a very big beer pot. So that is going to cause a weakness. So you have to you know, stop drinking beer and uh, drink uh, whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we are talking about you know the muscle weakness. So we need to work on the anterior muscle weakness. And as well as we need to stand on that now. Rotation. So can you reach to the left and the right without uh, moving the trunk? You see here, you can see the collage is not moving the trunk. Yeah, we should be scared, right? We should be scared. Be careful if you're doing for the first time, you'll get a catch. Okay, fine. So this is a very simple exercise which you can do. Which here with the one swimming, lying on the bed and doing a cycle without cycle. Okay, so you can do that. And yeah, can you try this? The next one, single leg stance. Can we all stand for fifty seconds? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Good. Yes. So you 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 hold for six. Oh, okay. that is fair enough. And uh, keep doing it and swap the side, lift down and right up. Getting the stability. Even if you can try this. <laughs> Uh, we have a Spider-Man, Superman. Yeah. So, uh, if you're not able to do this, the concept is very simple. Like, you know, you have a deep core, deep, deep hip range. So, either back, neck, or any musculature, again, you know, you strengthen this part, which is very important. And our BBMP have done beautiful parts. If you all had happened to see that, yeah. Kept all the you know exercises. One particular exercise is you know you keep it in this position and hold here and you know try to stretch out both the sides, which is good for single leg. Down. So you are going to you know going to hit the park today. I love you. No. Yeah. Can we try this? On, on your toes down, okay, which is very important. Not, yeah, not like you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your heel down, sir. Not complete, not on toes, sir. Heel should be like completely down. Yes. Keep, keep your knee, okay, the chip bone 
in between the first and the second uh, big toe and the second toe, keep it straight, okay? And then keep your hands in the front, okay? And try to lift it up. Now slowly go down. So knee should not be doing this. He should be within the line of the toes. If, if all of us are able to do this, this is the one which I start with. Okay. So I ask a big group of people, can you do this? If you can't do this, then we go one by one thing. If you can do this, you are good enough, you can keep you know moving away from this room. That means you don't need the session. So these are the seven patterns which we need to check among ourselves. So can you repeat again? First one. Extension. No, no, only extension. Okay, then the shoulder. Then the shoulder. First is the right side. Yeah. Second, you can try with the third inflection. Yeah. Or forward yeah. inflection. Yeah. Fourth one. Fifth. Rotation. Yeah. Hold for six seconds. If you are doing for six seconds, it's well and good. Okay. We are all fit. Okay. And deep skirt. If you have any issues, don't do it. Okay. Because it's so only so this is what uh, most of the times like you know, Indian toilets are good rather than the Western toilet. Mm -hmm. So you know, people are changing the trend, like you know, in Western countries they started using our Indian kind of toilets to get more stability in the knee because a large amount of people undergo uh, total knee replacement in the Western country, but now they are swapping out. They are trying to follow us. And one of the things you all see that like you know, carrying kits on the side, mm -hmm. which gives a lot of stability to the hip and other areas of the kits. And in Western, they drag you know, like a uh, funny dog. So what happens is, uh, you, you know, people, now they're changed. They're swapping around and they're asking, you know, they're carrying the kids on the side because it gives more stability. To the kids. Because otherwise, uh, they will have a lot of hip uh, dislocation at young age. They are more prone because kids start pulling each other and the hip can come. But that's uh, assessment. Now we are going to do the exercises. Please keep that. We all saw the movements. Everyone can do the movements, but it is a bit restricted, and especially teachers. I would say the looking upward, looking behind, these movements are restricted. We have seen all the movements which we can do, but the movements which we can't, what are the factors restricting it? What are the factors which are uh, by which we are not able to? So, first thing is go to just one cervical, cervical neck. Neck, just one uh, factor we look at, looking upwards or backwards. The first exercise, the person so told us, looking upwards. Many people were able to look but Some had a restricted movement, some were not able to do it properly, some got a pain. So the main exact reason, first, let me tell you, while sitting, desk job, laptop job, everyday teachers have to sit, make presentation for the students, we tend to look at the laptop. This is the posture we attain for 
longer duration of meeting. Like for hours and hours, teachers sit and make the presentation. You have to present it in the afternoon, and we start in the morning. Teachers start in the morning, nine thirty to eleven o'clock, eleven thirty. We just sit and do. This is the forward method. Other another thing, if uh, any teacher uh, is sitting, in uh, is if she, he or she is an invalid. In <laughs> <laughs> so he or she has to sit for a longer period of time and observe. So if it is a strict teacher, of course, uh, he tends to observe if the student is cheating, if anyone is trying to use the hand. <laughs> Curve is not used to this posture because of our sedentary lifestyle, because of our job, we have attained this posture, but we are not used to it. So we have to change it. Everyone did their, uh, this movement. So I'll tell you some exercises which can relieve them. Okay. Normally, setting you can do these exercises. First is you can try the chin touching. Forward touching. Everyone can do it with me. Start first, we'll start with normal. We'll start with normal, okay? Then, uh, not with the hand, I'm just showing you. It should go from here. <laughs> as much as you can. Don't try to move the shoulders, don't try to move the back. Just the chin, from normal, behind. Normal. Uh, initially, you can do it for 10 repetitions. If you are sitting, doing the desktop, desktop job, and after that, you get a leg pain, this is the first exercise you have. Second is, while normally sitting, you can tend to look from the right to the left pocket. It's easy, right to the left pocket. Why should this matter? <laughs> <laughs> so this this will stretch these muscles. There are very long names for these muscles, but relevant for most of the people. But this there is a, there will be a stretch on the front at the side. Holding it, holding this position for ten to fifteen seconds will be enough. Three times ten to fifteen seconds, ten to fifteen. Other exercise will be looking at the back pocket, if you have. <laughs> if you have the back pocket. This will stretch the anterior. The other side. You can hold it, this position, for 10 to 15 seconds. This will be for cervical, <laughs> this, the, uh, the upward movement and the down movement. Okay. Other aspects we can see if while side bending, side twisting, if anyone has a problem, we can look, have a look at that also. The OPDs are starting, you can come there. I'll be also there. So, definitely. Next is upper extremity movement. Now, not most of the people were able to. Okay, this is easy. This is a bit difficult. And touching down here is more difficult. But mostly in uh, thin people who are not much, people who don't have a muscle mass more, it's easy for them. But uh, for the sedentary lifestyle people whose shoulders are not uh, much movable, uh, I would not use the term movable, but not much athletic, they can't do this movement or they can't hold. Uh, you would have done this movement. Uh, right now, but now you are getting a bit of a shoulder pain. Are you? So that's because no one is able to do this. No one is doing this on a daily basis. If uh, I would say if Sakshi is doing it, she is a good uh, yoga student teacher. She will be able to do it properly, regularly, anytime. But if normally, if anyone asks asks you to do this, you'll get a bit shoulder stiffness or. Uh, so for this moment, but for this moment, this was just the test. But for the shoulder movements, I would say these are the anterior chest muscles. 
So can you sit and try to stretch these muscles? Slowly start from here, behind, as much as you can. Slowly hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Relax. Easy. For any shoulder stiffness, any shoulder pain because of the sedentary lifestyle you have, you can do this. This is for anterior. Now we have to look for posterior as well. Posterior behind, I mean, anterior is the front, posterior. So for behind muscles, sometimes they are very tight. When we tend to sit, we don't have adequate back rest or anything, we tend to hold our shoulders in a particular position. So that uh, has a lot of force on the posterior muscles. So we use two scapula. The muscles are there that are tightened. So to release them or to put a stretch on the back muscles is a very easy exercise. And this exercise, you can do it every day and I would advise you to do this exercise every day. For the upper trunk pain or the upper back pain that you have at the mid, here the center, if you have a pain, anytime, if you are on a bike ride, bike rides mostly you have a lower back pain. But if while riding this, uh, while riding a bike, car, if you have a back pain, you can get your arm straight. Take it to the opposite side, bend, and hold this shoulder as much as you can. Try to grab your shoulder. Put a pressure here, down, bend down. You gonna catch? Initially, do. Okay. With the other hand, we'll try straight. Hold, bend. Okay. Bend down as much as you. Comfortable, easy. These two are the upper back exercises. You can do it every day. And I would advise for mostly teachers to do it every day because of the back pain. The, the third one is. Side stretch as Sakshi has told you. This also you can do. Stretching to the sides. Right side to the left. Hold. Okay. Really. Left side to the right. Hold. Okay. Now is the multi segmental flexion. So multi segmental flexion. As you can look, it looks easy, but it is not as that easy. The major muscle restricting this, major muscle which is uh, which is restricting this movement is the hamstring or the posterior leg muscle. If this muscle is tight, you can't bend. Okay, bend halfway, I would say. But other movement is the spine bend. If you have an issue with the spine, the back curvature of the spine. Again, this is easy, but bending down would not be much possible. So, two major components I would say the back muscle hamstring here and the curvature of the spine. Okay. <laughs> that is the hip tilt, but that is not a big issue with everyone. Yes. <laughs> So for the hamstrings, hamstring stretch you can give by sitting or mostly in supine. I mean lying down position, you can give a stretch to hand. But while sitting also, you can put a, a, some cloth cloddle and pull. But like this, upwards. Pull and hold it for at least 10 seconds. This will stretch this muscle. Pull and hold. Okay. Other side, yes. You start with uh, three counts. So, for example, first time you are doing always hold for three counts. Then you increase into six, nine, and ten. Because 
if you start with 10 counts at the bottom, you might strain your back because you know the disc can come out at the first floor. So always uh, go with the, the pace and manner rather than trying to do 10, 15, and then starting to finish. And the second for the spine is a big it is uh, for the rectal spine, not again. But this muscle is very essential for bending. You have a spasm, you have tightness, you can't bend the spine. So for this, you can just be sitting, you try to bend down and touch. And try to touch your toes. <laughs> If you keep doing these two components, this looks easy and this will be easy for work. Okay? okay. <laughs> Next is bending back or extension. So, uh, let me ask you one thing. Uh, who is uh, who knows the term sciatica? Sciatica, sciatica, anything you can call sciatica. You are aware? Who is aware with the term disc, IVDP, disc prolapse, or anything like that? Who is aware with the term iliopsoas spasm? <laughs> is anyone here except for the physiotherapist group we have? Who is aware of the term in Helio Swiss past? So let me tell you one thing. Uh, eighty percent of the sedentary life back pain, sedentary lifestyle back pain, eighty percent of the pain is caused by this exact muscle spasm. Uh, imagine the thing if you are seeing. Uh, in uh, this ad, that sciatica muscle, this doctor, or, or else you have IVDP, disc prolapse. Uh, while riding, anything happens, you have a disc prolapse. They show a visualized picture of the prolapse disc. And then you sit for a longer time, you get back pain. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Oh, sure. Do I have a disc prolapse? Do I have sciatica? This is the normally a B thing that, yes, we may have. This is all of advertisement. If you get a long-term back pain, first of all, if you get a back pain for two, three days, no one is worried about it. If you have a back pain, you think you have a disc prolapse or anything, you go to the normal general physician. He gives medicines, okay, painkillers or uh, the anti-spasmodic drugs, the spasm is released for five days and uh, you feel good for five days, but again, your job has not changed. Your working environment has not changed, working place has not changed. You think, no, the doctor just gave medicines, he's not, he's not a good doctor, I'll go to a specialist. You go to a spine specialist, he tells you to do an MRI, anything. Then the MRI comes normal, then he tells you to consult a physician. But should it be this way? I don't think. Because the majority of the sedentary life type back pain, the main aim or the main people who treat the back pain are physicians. So I think in Indian society, we should change the concept of going to the general physician, specialization, MRI, X-ray, X-ray, MRI, then the physicians. Actually, we call the physicians. Normally, that's from the ground level. So uh, I think we should. Small question. I maybe this I did not uh, follow this. Many times with back pain in women, uh, sometimes you are dealing with breast cancer. You know, um, that is a first indication of breast cancer. Many times, recently it's happening or happened. Many things will happen when we have a back pain. Many times we say, yeah, uh, muscular relaxation, such a bump. And then go get to the dental do something else. Also, I identify the difference between the because of some problem in the back are this because of some other ailment which is consistently you are having a few ailments. Yeah, 
uh, then you will have cancer. You like you will have loss of appetite, weight loss, all this. But uh, not all the cancers can have a loss of weight and loss of appetite. Uh, we have come across uh, many people with back pain, with pain as you say, or even uh, like a um, disabled pancreast tumor. There is a breast tumor, so which uh, causes the right shoulder pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, gallbladder stones, you know, we all would have heard of it. That also causes right shoulder pain. So you really need to go to a person who knows or to identify and uh, then, you know, the investigation. So I just uh, look or differ from what he said. So it is, it is good you go to a general physician first or a family physician. So we all, we are breaking that. That's the biggest uh, uh, drawback or wrong thing which we are doing. A family physician knows about the entire family, like for example, okay, uh, someone in your father or uncle, maternal uncle, or somebody has uh, uh, arthritis, you are going to get arthritis. And uh, then you go to a, you know, a specialty. Then the specialty does, if, if you say so, three months, more than three months, I have constant pain, then definitely I would advise, uh, you know, the former of uh, 35, 40, you keep doing mammogram. Regularly, or you have to consult your gynecologist and then you know get the things done. So otherwise, we will not be able to see. We have a PET scan which which can be done only in few places. So for example, in Bangalore, we say uh, HC, HCG is good, Opera is good, then Astra, Amelia, Manipal is good. All the corporate has. So they, they are able to detect. Exactly the cancer. Even you know, you go to a, a, a small, tiny hospital, they fail. So it is not a wrong one from the medical professional. I, I feel that we are not aware what to do when we have issues. So who we should meet or what we need to do. Like you know, most of the times, like uh, when we get a neck pain, that's what what I feel the difference between the Western country and here. And we when we get a neck pain, so we try to work on ourselves, like you know, we have iodides or anything, we rub it. And then after that, when we are really crippled or disabled, then we go to the medical practitioner. So probably like if you have other about the uh, US system or Canada, you have to go to a physician, family physician, and then he screen you out whether it is needed to go to a, a specialist. Then you know you then you will go for why I'm saying is if I don't go to a specialist and if I go just to a physiotherapist straight away, he might be going to miss the red flag. So I uh, we have um, some kind of you know medical legal cases which has happened for tuberculosis of spine. Okay, so tuberculosis of spine means the mid back pain. So if if you just come to me, okay, I do what I know. I'm not going to screen with the MRI. So I do a mobilization or I give some therapy. And if it is there for a long time, it is going to spread to everywhere and the, the disease becomes worse. So it is always good to go step by step rather than jump. So only thing which we need to, I, I would tell you is anything is uh, staying for a long period of time, then you intervene immediately. Like, okay. I know that I lifted something, I got a catch. So you are able to correlate. Or I'll tell you an example. You get a swelling in the knee without any reason. Then you have to meet the doctor. But you know you have fell down and you got swelling. Then you understand, okay, because of my injury, I got that swelling. So it. Mechanical pain. So we all did this moment, right? We got pain. Okay. So 
So when you do three, four times, the intensity of the pain should reduce. If you say so, why don't you keep on doing it and the pain is going, going on increasing, that, that means, you know, it tells you that something is wrong. So you really need to go to a doctor and we don't want, uh, you know, the things to be learned through video or screen always. It's better to get uh, diagnosed with a proper specialist. Thank you. Can we continue? Um, so for the back pain, I think, telling about the main muscle that I'll show you a different stretching of this muscle. Okay. When you get a back pain, you can do this stretch. Okay. Then uh, everyone do it with me. First, the right leg. The right leg should be behind your body as much as you can. You can stand like this. Look at that. Foot straight. Both the foot straight. Now, I tell you to bend forward, but the heel of the back foot should not be raised. Heel of the back foot should not be raised or lifted. Okay. So you have to bend forward. Yeah, you should not get up again. You should sleep. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is if you lift the like, heel, it's easy. It tells you that there is muscles are tight. So you have to stretch uh, as he explained earlier, over the hamstrings or the other side, we will try. Okay. Don't try to lift the. Okay. Then, second for the abdominal stretch, also, you can do this movement. I think all of you are aware of cobra stretch. So, on the neck. so that's the best one to get uh, your know, abdominal stretch. So you can integrate that. Then single leg start. So uh, this was the uh, uh, view from the front. One can from the side. When you are doing it like this. This is what this is. Bending to the left forward. Okay. Bit difficult. So we can see that. Okay. It should be 90 degrees. Give me. Me. 90 degrees. So Saturday. This is 90 degrees. For this uh, exercise. This exercise, many many muscles should be strong, not just the upper leg muscles, not just the lower leg muscles. One thing is, if you lift this leg up, you're trying to balance this leg. If you are not able to balance the leg, where exactly will you have a problem? You can lift. Where exactly will you have a problem? If, uh, right, left. If I'm not able to balance on the left, right, uh, it depends. If this muscles are not strong, yes, definitely I am not able to stand on one. But again, if this side is not strong enough to hold the leg up, then it is a problem. This is the work of a physiotherapist to identify which side is weak. If you stand on this side, Right side, okay, you're not able to stand properly. You know there is a problem. But is the right weak or the left weak? Is the right not able to take all the load of the body? Or is the left not able to hold the other side of the body? That identification of that problem is the main thing. So for this also, this is a uh, very uh, 
big movement. So all the components should be taken under consideration. Some will have an issue with the right side, some will have an issue with the left side. Depending upon that, we can plan the exercise protocol. This is multi-segmental rotation. So for this, the legs should be kept straight. First thing is the leg should be kept straight. Not like this, not like this. Leg straight and then take it back. Okay. So for this, as Sir told, uh, one is cycling. One is cycling, not with a cycle. <laughs> uh, lying down position, you have to take your legs up and you try cycling. But that is a lying down position. When you're lying down, so it is not possible every day. So uh, one of the easy thing to do is sitting as you all are. Try to touch your knee to the other side of the shoulder. Right knee to the opposite shoulder. Try to touch. I'm not telling you to touch. <laughs> Try. That will stretch this muscle. It is not that if you are not able to touch, you have any problem. Right? Try as much as you can. Try to touch the right knee to the left shoulder. Then again, the left knee to the right shoulder. Yes. This is one of the major exercises, and if anyone is able to do this, yes, he is closer to fit. He is closer to fit again, but he or she, he or she is closer to fit. And if anyone is not able to do, do this exercise, there are many problems. I wouldn't say particularly that you have this problem. Uh, like this is the calf, the upper leg, the back, hands. It is a gross over a golf course. So some can't do this exercise because they can't maintain their balance. They cannot maintain their balance. Other half of the uh, other half of the population can't do this exercise uh, just because of the back issue. Some because of the knee issues, some because of the shoulder issues. So this is not just one moment to determine one activity. This is overall movement. If you cannot do this exercise, you have a problem. A problem is enough. And what problem is there? We are here any time to assess. There, there will be a OPD also here. If you have this issue, you can come there. We can identify. Which part of your body has a stretch or has a spasm or it? So these were the normal exercises you can do on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and now you know there are common exercises for the whole body. In which uh, where we do the next of jobs will be explained by Abhiva. Hi everyone, I'm Atira. Uh, we have seen many exercises that are uh, showed by Kalash, and um, now we are seeing. Some exercises that we can do in between our work. Okay. So, um, how many of them are having back pain, neck pain, ear is pain? Yeah, often to get. So, first we are talking about the wrist, okay? So, the wrist is perfectly to gain. First, we are doing some wrist till. Exercises. Okay, the wrist tilt is perfectly to gain feeling and momentum back into the wrist joint. So, especially after long words of typing on the keyboard, they are usually using this uh, keyboard uh, monitor like setup. So, first we are doing some wrist tilt exercises. First, we begin with the arm fully extended, 
arm fully extended. Can you do it with me? They will demonstrate it. Palm facing downwards. Palm facing downwards. So gently tilt the wrist into the right side and left side. Take it normal, then left. Right, normal, then left. This is the wrist tilt exercise that we can do in between our work. It will help to reduce the pain that when you are getting while using this uh, lap, keyboard, mouse and all. Then next is wrist flexion exercises. Flexion means it is a bending activity. Yeah, yeah, both, both we can do. So, <laughs> yeah, we can do both. Then the next one is stress flexion exercises. The same in the picture. Hold arm upward with palm facing down. Then catch the fingers of the extended hand with your opposite hand, like this. Stretch. Then give a stretch. Then keep it down. Then again, have to extend. Yeah, stretch. Then you can uh, hold it for five seconds. Then leave it. Then uh, stretch for five seconds. Then leave it. This is the next exercise that is wrist flexion exercise. This also you can do in between your work when you are getting free time. This is extended finger stretch. This, just keep your hand like this and just do like this, then leave it. Like this. Make your first time. These three exercises are, we can do for a rest. Um, So, so the next we are talking about next neck relaxation exercises. As the picture shows that uh, we had already talked about it, just extend our neck. Bend it towards your chest. Normal. Extend. Normal. And and flex. Then the next one to the side. No more. Side. No more. And a side bend. Take to the shoulder. You can take the head to the shoulder. Just repeat it for 10 times. And now we are talking about overhead shoulder stretches. As the picture shows, just take your hand up. Yes. Just slightly you can bend your elbow. Just stretch. And the other hand. Slightly you can bend your elbow, then it will move a little bit here. As the pictures will show, take your hand back with the other hand, just pull it back. This is overhead shoulder stretch and the other side. Then the next one, as the picture shows, take the both hand up. About the hip, just stretch it out. So the next, this is shoulder roller. Like you have to take your both shoulder up like a shrug, shrugging position here. 
just show roll. roll roll yeah and clockwise direction and anti clockwise direction forward just forward and back This is about chest stretch. Just stand and stand. Take your both hand back and just stretch your chest. This is another exercise for your chest. This is back and side stretch. Just take your both hands up. Just stretch it maximum. How much, as much as possible. Take it up. Take it up, take it up. Just hold it for 10 seconds. Then take it down. Again, you have to do it for three sides again. As much as possible, how much you, you should get a stretch out in the body. Not just lifting, you have to stretch enough. Then the same position and have to bend side. Are you getting a stretch in opposite side? Both sides. We have talked about wrist, shoulder, chest, neck, and any place of the Just take your knee your chest. Try to take it on the same side, not the opposite side. Just hold it for five seconds, leave it, then the other. Can you please let me come? Just keep the palm. Go back. Right. Yes. Just hold it for 10 seconds. Then relax. Again, you have to You can sit. Then again, it is a leg lift. This is the same position. You have to take the leg up, down. Alternately, you have to do this right, left, right, left. You can do this all exercise when you are walking itself. I guess <laughs> Then it is a calf stretch. Calf stretch. Calf muscle is the posterior leg muscle. Just stand. Thank you. 
do that, you have a, like, a doorway on, you have a landing like this. Then you can push closer to it and tend to go on. It automatically can find the end of the Yeah, just keep the door uh, on the end and then go on. Go on. Okay. Yeah. So these are the exercises that you can do in your workstation. Thank you. So thank you, Anita, for the explanation. And uh, we are almost come to the end. Okay. So we have uh, Ashin, who is uh, going to talk a uh, very important aspect for uh, you know our work to be moving. So I welcome Ashin to come over here. Uh, good afternoon, one and all present here. So I'm going to talk about the resilience. So before starting with my topic, I would like to tell that we focus mainly ergonomics for the IT job professionals who work on the desk job. So we have seen a lot of videos and the material in the net, internet when we browse on to ergonomics. So we should understand how much it is important for the teacher faculty uh, to maintain the posture in their work period and to carry forward the work efficiently for many years to come and to serve all the students with their knowledge. So first thing is, uh, I would like to just give a big round of applause for all the lecturers for being so efficient workers and uh, work 24 hours in a day, like whether it can be in the college or after at home preparing the slides to give the best of their knowledge. So a big round of applause for all of you. Yeah, for the resilience, uh, what we understand by the resilience, it is the capacity to bounce back from any uh, setbacks. For example, it can be a physical or the emotional, mental stress. Physical can be any injury which you have pertained while, while the process of teaching during your uh, travel hours or uh, any kind of uh, uh, ailments which you are already suffering with, any systemic diseases like uh, blood pressure, your uh, diabetes, all these uh, things along with that you're carrying out with work. So the stress level will be more, okay? Sometimes you may not get, get the time to have the medications during the class hours. So you tend to work dedicatedly for the classes. So that is where required to, uh, that is when uh, this resilience, which we are talking about is how to come back from that phase to your work efficiently. So here are the few components of the resilience. Uh, this is the cognitive aspect. Cognitive means uh, like how you are able to cope up with the stress. What are your reasoning for that? And uh, see, uh, for example, uh, yesterday uh, you have uh, you have just completed all your work for today, and the next day when you are coming to your staff room, you see the pile of uh, records kept on your desk, which has to be done yet. And then the whole day you have already planned for a number of lectures back to back lectures. So how will you deal with that stress? First thing what comes to your mind is, oh, shit, I have all of these work to do. Okay, that thing should not be there. So how will you start your day with? So begin your day, whatever makes you comfortable or whatever gives you a sense of relaxation. So for uh, many of us, it will be a light music, soft music, by traveling in your car or however you're traveling. Uh, the second thing will be your breathing exercises as explained by Sakshi in the morning. So that is uh, one of the best practices to start your day with. That will boost your energy and you know, it keeps you uh, always active enough for the whole day. And next will be your exercises. So for this exercises, it's like uh, you know your body well. 
So you have to accept it, what exercises you will be able to do freely and efficiently without any pain. Okay. So this will be the cognitive aspects. Next will be your emotional aspects. So as I said, there are two duration of works, which your primary work is in your college and the secondary work as is at your home. So once you prepare all the classes and everything is done, once you get back to the home, again, you have to prepare for the next coming up session for the next day. So what will happen is at the classroom or the staff room, you'll have all your desk, everything is arranged so well. But at the home, you have to manage both the things. You may, you may keep your laptop and other so many books or materials to prepare those slides and you have to bend forward, reach it. So that will already have a stress on your entire body mechanics. So with that stress, if you will not have a, enough amount of sleep or the rest in the night, and then you get up in the morning and come to the college for your upcoming lecture, you will not be ready for the day. So how to do for that is, again, you have to practice all these uh, yoga techniques, your soft music, sense of uh, calming down yourself, so all of it. And uh, the whole day you have to speak. So for that, your throat should be moist enough. So enough amount of water breaks, enough amount of breaks for emptying your bladder, all those things you have to uh, carry on. And the emotional aspect is some stress which you have at the home. You might be thinking all of, about it. Uh, sometimes when you talk with your colleagues about uh, the stress which you're going through at your home, they might give you some input, some healthy conversation regarding your lectures or regarding your household things. You will uh, boost up with positivity from within. So that healthy environment also impacts for a efficient working. Next will be your physical environment. This is your workstation. Workstation means what and all you're dealing with. Uh, your desk, your podium, uh, all, uh, your uh, blackboard, the efficient way of turning, looking to the students, talking to them, making the notes, uh, invigilation, all sort of things. Everything, how will you carry being in the biomechanical limits and maintaining the physiology of the muscle and the joints so that you work efficiently. So, Resilience is a very important component, not only to come up with your professional life, but also with your personal development also. Uh, so here we'll be uh, talking about the personal mission and uh, like these are the components, personal mission and values, alignment to the workplace, alignment, which means like, for example, if I'm standing for this podium, I'll be working on something over here. Suddenly we should not turn back or twist because we're standing for a longer duration. Already there is a load put upon your spine. With that load, if you twist your back, you will hurt yourself. Definitely. At that point of time, you will think, okay, I can manage with this little bit of pain. I can carry forward with my class. But does it, that doesn't hold good. If you keep doing this for a longer period of time, it can uh, pose a, stretch, a strain on your back and your muscles will catch. Okay. So we have to take care about it. If you want to turn back and take something, completely turn your body, go and pick up the object and get back to your place. So that will be the alignment with the workplace, workstation. The next component will be social involvement. How well will uh, you should not be restricted to only your uh, components, what you're doing. Uh, he healthy conversations with your colleagues and with your students, everything will have to maintain. And then emotion management. As I said, how will you uh, cope up with the stress? Just calming down yourself in your own ways, whatever is suitable for all of you. Problem solving approach. So this is something like uh, during the pandemic, uh, we all had an um, opportunity to start off with online classes. Right. So how did you do the problem solving? That was a problem, right? Pandemic was a problem for all of us. So how we, did we stop our education? No, we continued it. So we had the other way of doing it. We used the you know, online sources. We started applying the Zoom classes, Google Meets. Those two are two different uh, so applications, software applications. So we have learned that new skill. So we are applying it. So how your problem solving capacity is there? That's what is there. Then uh, problem solving is done. Now concentration and focus. So here, what I would like to tell is concentration and focus means your uh, type of work, it includes more of the standing or the sitting job. So what muscles are involved? Mostly your posterior chain. It always keeps uh, contracting or always keeps active. And this anterior chain is almost weak. We not tend to stretch this much or we not uh, use it much. So as Sir and all other uh, our, uh, speakers have talked about it. So we have to stretch all these components your breathing exercises is the best way to do it uh, as it will expand the ribcage. Okay, even the oxygen input, which will help in healing all of the, uh, it, it has to be there for every part of the body, oxygen supply. So recently we have heard a lot, lot more cases about strokes and uh, myocardial infarction, cardiac arrest, all those things. 
So why that is happening? Because we are using the mask. So are we uh, more concentrating on our breathing exercises? So any one of you are starting your day with breathing, breathing exercises at least 15 minutes a day in the morning or after going from, uh, from the college? Yes, that's a very good practice. So please uh, remember these things. So if any injury which is pertaining in the body, if we want that to get healed fast, so oxygen is the best supplement which we can give naturally. Okay. So, so next thing. So resiliency, what does it look looks like? So whom we call it as a resilient person. So that person should have a property like overcoming the adversity, any adversity which has happened to them. For example, when you're traveling in a bus, uh, or when you're getting down, you have not landed properly on your foot and you have sprained, you have a minor sprain in your ankle. How well will you manage with that adversity? Whether you keep on walking on it, give more strain on that, standing on that, or how will you do it? First thing, you'll give the first aid, you'll apply your eyes, you'll uh, secure it with the bandage, right? And you follow this safely uh, climbing up. If your classroom is at the third floor, what will you do? You will just climb one step at a time. So we have some... Uh, Pneumonia, like some uh, quotation what we uh, use generally in the physiotherapy is go up with a good leg, come down to the stress with a bad leg. Okay, so climb up with your good leg and use your uh, railings also. Use the resources which are all is available at the campus. So that's how you will overcome the adversity and bounce back from that setback to your normal life and do adequate exercises pertaining to your uh, strain levels. And if you think that that day you have to stand for a longer period of time for your lectures, uh, just keep walking, do not stand in one place, keep moving to every corner of the classroom, uh, maintain an erect posture, stretch either up, and uh, maintain this 20-20 rule. For every 20 minutes, look to the 20 meter distance as far as possible. Okay. The next is emotional stability. So I've already talked about this, how well you can manage both the professional and the personal life. So this is like, under the pressure, how well will you perform? There are two consequences. Like either you will flourish within that pressure or else you will wilt. You just think out, okay, why this has happened to me? I have to only deal with all the stress. I have to work this. I have to go home and uh, prepare all the sort of the things, which is actually you all are a multitasker. So you're handling very well, efficiently. But for that to be continued, you should take care of your body. Uh, listen to the signals which your body is giving. Okay, initially, if you start having a strain in your neck, start as a, treating it very well, like go to your therapist immediately, start doing stretching exercises, strengthening exercises, apply your hot pack. Okay, you can do all of that. So flourishing will be, you can believe that, you can you should believe on your skills. As we all did, we, we were knowing something different before. We used to use a, a traditional way of teaching, using the blackboard and all sort of things. Now we have changed on to the, we have shifted our skills. Like we are using online platforms, to teach. So that's how you are building yourself. You have to accept the change. You have to move on uh, forward with it. So these are also one of the few components of resilience. Like you have to have the confidence. Uh, you should have the social support, adaptability, and purposefulness. So these are the steps to build professional resilience. The first thing which I talked about was accepting the change. So using the mask, it was not normal two years back for us. Right now, we have accepted it that we have to do it for our own good. But then what are the effects, like, uh, you know, the drawbacks of using the mask? We all are well aware of that. So are we doing anything for overcoming it? So we should start thinking about that. So we have to accept the change. We have already accepted it. We are using the mask. But are we uh, doing anything for our body to compensate that? That we have to think. Okay, we have to change accordingly. Then becoming a continuous learner. Again, this aspect, I will be using the same example. So we have, uh, we have uh, learning, we are learning continuously. So we are updating our skills. You know, we are learning from the online platforms. We are trying to use all other different types of softwares to deal with. So we are improving our skills, basically. Then you have to take charge of your own career. So how long uh, you're working, how efficiently you're working. So what you want uh, next to build up with your career any courses if you like, if you have any extra time, all sort of things which will help you build professionally as well as personally. Then find your sense of purpose. So in this, uh, your sense of purpose will be delivering for the uh, students the best of your knowledge and uh, equally important is maintaining yourself healthy.
So that purpose is how well you manage your time. So begin your day first thing with the med meditation. It's very good to keep calm your keep your mind calm and to uh, allow the things to come into your mind. You know, for the cognitive aspect, your meditation holds very good for that. Next thing will be breathing exercises that overall oxygen supply and your thoracic expansion, your ribcage expansion. So that thing, second thing. And the third will be your yoga poses, stretches or your exercises. Physical exercises based on your work uh, fraternity. For example, if you're writing so much or you're doing something with your wrist more, keep doing the stretches as already been explained. Use your hand. If you think you are sitting more for that day, do your neck stretches. Okay. If you think uh, you have to stand for longer period of time, you need to stretch your calf. So all sort of things you have to uh, plan your day accordingly. Then after coming from home again, you have to spare a few few hours for yourself so, so that you can work better and enough amount of sleep is also required for the next day to start fresh. Uh, then it will be your skill shift. Again, this has already been covered. Pay attention, attention to the self-identity. Always self-growth is also very important. So we always tend to uh, divide our time for the uh, college, for the students, for others, basically, for uh, kids, for your spouse, all those things. But do you give time for yourself? That we have to start. What gives you happiness? What makes you happy uh, to maintain yourself? That you have to start doing it. Thank you all. Thank you, Shreya. You can uh, reach her at uh, Badmashree Diagnostics. She's uh, working from nine to four. So you can, you know, if you have any kind of uh, your physical dysfunctions or difficulties, you know, you can reach to her also. Yeah. So thank you, all dear friends, for listening to us patiently with, uh, you know, trying to increase our well-being and uh, trying to do our work environment better and uh, you know, uh, propel more towards a better outcome. That's the uh, uh, only reason why we are here. So uh, thanks to Madam, uh, thanks to Sir and all the faculties over here for listening to us. And if, if you have any kind of uh, Questions which can be clarified now, then it is uh, you can ask within five minutes. Within five minutes, you can ask. Otherwise, you know, you, you are always you can reach us to the department here, which we are going to start soon, or you can reach us to Madhmashri uh, Physiotherapy Clinic at Nagavali. We have our vice principal, Dr. Nagaraj. He takes care of it. Okay. And that, uh, you can reach us to the shared diagnostic is that uh, uh, Vijayananda, where myself or Ashish, we also have this region, or she's not here, she comes in the evening. So we have you know, a team of people, the uh, postgraduates who are always there to help us. Okay. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, we are ready to answer. Uh, if not, so yeah, thank you. A very big thanks to the entire team who spared their time and their energy and all the things, the involvement to make a teacher fit, which is most important thing for the growth of the institution and growth of the society and growth of the country. It has been, if you are well, you can you can pass it on to the student. If you are not well, it is again a problem to the student and by large, it is a problem to the society. Here I have a small suggestion to you, ma'am. Uh, when you talk about resilience, the most important component which is missing is nutrition. Uh, please add one, uh, one small part of it uh, to this because all the teachers, mostly we are having the female teachers here. Uh, generally, the teaching profession has been uh, dominated by female teachers. They tend to either neglect or overeat. They overeat because it is going to get wasted. They neglect it because the most important nutrition factor should go to their family. Because of this, 
all the problems, whatever you are talking, are going to get multiplied several fold. I request our nutrition department should work very closely with this department, and we need to come up with a holistic solution to us first and then first start with it. Thank you. Thank you for giving me amazing You did your food. You see my boxers, almost five, six boxers. <laughs> she take all the pain to prepare you know, that, and uh, this also I should add. Like the other day, you know, I missed one box because it's very tiny, so I didn't see that. So, I had a very rough evening. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, yeah, definitely nutritive is very very important. Uh, because uh, when anyone walks in with the musculoskeletal problem, uh, the first thing I, I ask them is, uh, uh, do you have checked with your vitamin D or have you checked with your B12? Do you drink adequate water? Do you sleep well? Or you know, do you exercise? So these are the five things which I ask anyone who walks in with the pain. Because if you don't sleep well, uh, definitely, you know, the PP will increase, uh, so we are going to, uh, have uh, reflect on the students. I'm going to shout at the students when they come. You do that. You didn't do that. Or all these things. So, as a teacher, we need to have a lot of compassion, or we need to, you know, control the stress or pressure which we are bounded or which we encounter in the other environment as we are talking. Definitely, it is not easy task, but. Uh, uh, as uh, Madam was saying, like, uh, we are trying to deliver uh, future kids or future you know, nutritionists or nutri uh, physiotherapists or any, any other faculty, like you know, we have microbiologists okay, or CNG or SAV in there, you know, who teaches uh, language, which is very, very important because, yeah, I, I would say, like, uh, uh, communication skill is very important for any 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 department. So language is very important. So how we communicate, how you transform the knowledge to others. So thank you very much. And if you have any uh, difficulties or any kind of uh, you know concerns with the pain, you can always reach to our department. We are there to help. Uh, we are there to you know share our experiences with our patients so that you will get better and in turn you will be able to give a good outcome for the work or the students. So, yeah, thank you very much. All of you have given the feedback. We are ending the session.